Welcome back to this video where I demonstrate how I go about creating an Amazon Cognito user pool as well as an Amazon Cognito user pool client. So how we're going to do things in this video is that in, I'll first start off by out exporting the user profile that I'll be using to create these on my Amazon account. Then once I'm done with that, I'm then going to create the file structure that we are going to use essentially uh, to write the resources. And it's going to be quite simple. It'll be the man.tf uh, file, it'll be the variables file, the provider file, and it'll be the outputs file as well. Once I'm done with that, I am then going to go ahead and create the resources, which is the user pool as well as the user pool client. And then I'm going to run the Terraform uh, commands such as init, plan, and apply. And once everything has been created successfully, then I'll run the Terraform destroy uh, command to pull all of those resources down so that we don't leave anything within the account that's not necessary to leave behind. Right. So let's start off by I'm going to export the AWS profile. And I'm going to put that in the environment variables. And the name of the profile is cloud space. So cloud space is the profile that has the necessary access keys to the account uh, connected to the user that has the permissions to do what we're doing. In your case, it might just be um, exporting uh, the, it, would, it might be a case of configuring the AWS uh, credentials on your end to get this going. All right, then I'm gonna clear it, just clear it, clean it up. Because I'm done with that, I'm now going to create the file. So it'll be the main.tf file. It'll be the variables.tf file. It'll be the outputs.tf file and the provider.tf file. Okay. With the files all created, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the provider by doing Terraform. And then I'm going to say required providers. Sorry, required I'm just going to type it really. Required providers, it'll be AWS and it'll come from a source. And in this case, it'll be HashiCorp slash AWS. Okay. I'm not going to tie this to a specific version. I'm just going to keep the latest version, whatever it is. And then I'm going to set up the provider to AWS and Within the provider itself, I'm going to set the region um, and I'm going to set it to EU uh, West 1. Okay, cool. Uh, that's it. So we've set up the provider and that's complete. Now it's time to move on to the resources themselves. So we're going to start off with the AWS Cognito um, underscore user pool. Okay, and I'm just going to give it a name of a user pool. Okay, right. That now set up. We're now ready to then look at what arguments we want uh, along with this user pool. I'm just get rid of this quickly. Don't need that. Um, okay, cool. So I'm just going to now start looking at the arguments, right? Remember, our arguments really allow us to set the attributes required by the resource itself. Uh, we're going to start off, not all of these are required when it comes to the user pool. In fact, the only one that's required is just the name. And in this case, I'm just going to call it my user pool, right? Just for simplicity's sake, yeah. Um, all the other ones are optional, but I think in as much as they're optional, it's it's quite mandatory to set them up. So we're looking at things like how we want, what attributes we want the user to um, to pass to us in order to store into our directory, how we want to handle passwords, um, and how we want to be able to verify the users in the first place, right? So the first one we're going to look at is the schema which essentially relates to the attributes that we require from them. So the first, we also will have email, the attribute type will be string, uh, it'll be mutable, and in order to make it work, we have to pass in uh, developer only attribute to false. Okay, now we're done with the schema. Once we're done with the schema, we then want to determine um, how we'll send out a notification to them that you know they've signed up and you know um, 
and how we then verify them going forward. Uh, so we're going to say email configuration, email sending account. There's really two options here. We can use Cognito's default way of doing it, or we can use SES. I don't have SES set up. We can probably do that in a later video. But in this one, we're just going to stick with the basics and we're going to use Cognito underscore default, right? Uh, with that set up now, we want to make sure that we, we we automatically verify their email address. Uh, and this is going to be important, especially when you want to start using the, you know, want to use Cognito with like something like Node.js, then those emails will be sent out to verify the email um, itself, right? Now, in terms of the password policies, right? So they're gonna set their own password, but there's, there's certain policies that we want applied to the password that they pass to us. So we want a minimum length of six. We wanna require locate, lowercase true. We wanna requ require um, numbers true. We wanna require uh, symbols, I'll set that to true. Um, we want to require uppercase and we'll set that to true. So these are the policies um, that we're setting up for. These are our requirements for the uh, for the password. Uh, now that we're done with the password, we're done with the schema, we're done with how we want them verified. Now let's look at setting up what we want as a username. Yeah, again, to keep it simple, we won't want a separate username that's different from the email um, username then let's configure how that username uh, ought to look like or ought to be verified rather uh, we want it to be case sensitive okay we are now going to look at how do we want to handle a situation where they have to recover um, the account so in, in order to do that we'll look at account underscore recovery settings and the recovery mechanism that we want to use will be um, a verified email. And we set the priority level there to one. Cool. Okay, so these are the things that we require for the Amazon Cognito user pool. Um, and so I'll leave this, I think I'll stop here for this particular video because I think it's getting a bit long. And then in the next one, I'll do the the Amazon Cognito client. Uh, thank you for watching uh, and obviously stay tuned for the next video where we start to provision the client.